Okay, well I'm, uh, I'm on an experimental antenna and uh, running about 40 watts uh, from an ICOM 7300, so uh, you're about 20 over 9. I'm, uh, I hear booming in here. You know, you're, you're on the way up there for 40 watts. He's an RV in a rock port and running 40 watts, but super loud out here in West Texas. Whereabouts uh, is is that in West Texas, uh, Alpine? Is that uh, is that uh, towards the uh, western edge of the state or towards the center part? The uh, western part. We're about uh, oh probably 100 miles north of Big Bend National Park. Oh yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, uh well. I'm I'm glad I'm getting out that well. <laughs> Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is part two of the 75 and 80 meter fan dipole experiment. It's an experiment. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not saying, hey, this is a great antenna, build it, it works. I'm saying this is an experiment. So let's get into it. To recap, uh, I have a friend up in Fort Wayne, Jim, AC9EZ, who once told me about an experiment he did. Now what he had was, he had actually, in the previous video I, I misstated, he didn't have uh, um, two dipoles. He had two inverted L's that he'd built. One was cut for the lower portion of... Um, 80 meters CW area and the other was cut for the voice portion up in 75 meters uh, for, for voice operations and he uh, fed them together with the same feed line using the two antennas together now that worked for him he had a pretty decent um, SWR across the entire band between the two antennas and my thought was to take that idea and put it into a fan dipole and further, I wanted to try to build a fan dipole using window line. This is the di design I came up with using uh, some window line and cutting one leg for the uh, uh, a third of the way from the top of the band and cutting the other leg for a third of the way from the bottom of the band and hoping that uh, in the middle that they would kind of share the load and be a fat dipole and, and stay low in the middle. Uh, so uh, that was the idea. Well, I built it, I put it up, and I tested it. So first off, let's go look at the build. Well, here's the 3D printed center structure, the same one that I used on the 40 meter folded dipole. I have measured out and cut two legs. This is, woohoo, looks like a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> this is one leg of the uh, dipole. A little bit heavy, it's gonna be some strain on it. A lot of weight for this to support. But I'm not worried about the lateral pull on this. The way this is printed, that's pulling against the strands of the plastic, and that is very, very strong. I could probably hang from this. If this end was attached to the ceiling and I had a loop hanging from this end, I could hang from this. It could hold my 185 pounds just fine. So it'll hold the strain. What it might do is it might bend like that over time. This is PLA plastic, not the best choice for a long-term antenna installation. However, I'm never in one place for very long being in the RV. This antenna will go up and maybe come down for, you know, it'll go up maybe for two or three weeks, a month at a time. So this will be fine for my situation. If you were building an antenna like this for a long term, you'd want to use a different material for the center structure. I just happen to have this design, so I'm going to reuse it. I'm just coming up with a plan here for how I'm going to anchor these ends on here. And I actually think I'm going to need another set of holes here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole through and another one there and put a small screw and washer in there to clamp this to the plastic to take up the strain, right? Because that's going to have a lot of pull on it with the weight of the antenna. These center holes here, I'm going to put terminals, and that's where both of these are going to connect on each side. And then I've got a one-to-one -one common mode choke here that's going to go from the connector to these terminals in there like that. So that's going to be the center structure. That's what I'm building this morning. The other thing I'm going to have to do is at the other end of the leg, where I've just got the, you know, just the end, um, 
three feet in, well, 2.85 feet in from the end, I'm going to have to cut the bottom wire for the shorter second leg. Well, when I cut that bottom wire, that's going to put all the strain on this wire. So what I'm going to do is find that point that is uh, 2.85, 2.9 feet in from the end. And I am going to take my cutting board that I've been hacking up for material, and I'm going to cut a couple of little strips of it. And uh, at the point where I'm going to be nipping the wire on the bottom, I'm going to put one of those strips across here and anchor it to these. So that strip will take on the load um, at the point where I cut the second wire, so that the you know it's not all all that load is not falling on just the one wire. So I got to do that. Once I've got that done, the uh, antenna will be assembled, and I can put it up and start scanning it. But I got to get it uh, got to get this center part built, figured out, holes drilled, hardware mounted wires soldered in, you know, all that. i got to get all that done today. So that's what I'm working on. I'll show you this when it's uh, completed here in a little while. Well, the antenna is pretty much complete now. We've got the center structure there with the uh, common mode choke. These are anchor points here where I've anchored through there. Got to have plenty of strength because there's going to be a lot of tension on here with all this weight. I'm going to weatherproof this, cover it with silicone and the uh, screw heads on the back. Um, on the legs, out where I'm going to be cutting uh, this wire to make the short leg for the upper end of the band, I have reinforced them with these pieces of plastic here. This is part of that cutting board from Walmart. 89 cents for one cutting board, and I've used it for a bunch of projects. Man, you can't, you can't go wrong on that price of material. And that's anchored here and here so that when I cut this wire, the plastic will take this strain because there's going to be the weight of this leg of the antenna on this and uh, I didn't want to put all that weight just on this wire. It would stretch it. So that's what I did there. And you can see there's, I don't know if you can see it, there's just a slight bit of slack in here um, so that I can cut that wire and make sure that all the weight is actually taken up on the piece of plastic. And I did that on, on each leg. This one also has one right there. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put the antenna up with both legs connected at the full length for the low end of the band. And I'm going to do that because I want to scan the antenna uh, and see what the bandwidth is. A regular dipole from 2 to 1 SWR at the one end to 2 to 1 SWR at the other end is usually around 230 kilohertz wide. But this is, is going to have two conductors here with some width between them, so it's kind of like a fat dipole. And as you know with dipoles, the bigger the conductor, the broader the bandwidth. So I want to scan it first with both legs the full length to get a bandwidth idea of what the fat dipole is giving us. You know, will it be 300 kilohertz or will it be 340 kilohertz? Who knows? So we'll do that first after I get it up. Then I'll go out and I'll drop the legs down one at a time and cut that wire so that we have a shorter leg for the upper end of the band. And we'll put it back up and then we'll scan it again. And hopefully what we'll see is a bandwidth that encompasses the entire uh, 75, 80 meter band from 3.5 megahertz to 4 megahertz. I'm hoping to see a bandwidth that's low all the way across the whole band. So. Now the hard work. I got to go out and uh, put the antenna up. So now that I had the antenna built, I had to wait uh, for some good weather to put it up. And today finally provided some good weather. We had rain, 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 and some thunderstorms for a while. But those ended this morning. So I went about putting the antenna up. Uh, we got the center up on the tower. And then the uh, legs um, were up to a tree and uh, a pole at the other end. Uh, it's about... Um, Oh, 15 or so feet off the ground, maybe 20 feet at the apex. Not enough. I mean, it really should be at least a quarter of a wavelength higher, but uh, I didn't want to climb any higher on that tower with my back and my neck. I was having a hard time just getting that far up. Um, so we got it where we got it. Uh, I got it up in the air, and then uh, uh, initially I put it up with both legs cut to the same length. I wanted to see how broad it was 
with the two conductors the same length and acting as one. The idea being it's a fatter dipole, right? You've got the, the spacing of that window line to give it a, a, a larger area and perhaps its bandwidth would be a little bit higher. And I did a scan with the VNA uh, and um, uh, it's a little bit long. The center was just, just about the bottom of the band. But if we look at the bandwidth from two to one to two to one, uh, we see a bandwidth of around 230 kilohertz. Um, yeah, about what you'd expect from a regular dipole. So it really wasn't any wider. So then I took the legs down and uh, I cut them. And then after I'd cut them and put the uh, dipole back up, we scanned it again. And I was a little excited. I was hoping to see uh, something good. But no, we didn't see something good. Here is the scan. Uh, and strangely, the bottom end shifted down. And uh, the top end was not as high as I'd hoped with the uh, shorter leg. But uh, we can see enough detail there to see what's going on. It looks like the individual bandwidth of each of the legs compressed down to about 130 kilohertz, where it was 230 with... Uh, both of them together um, and it comes up rather dramatically there in the center they, there isn't uh, really any any difference between the two now why did it why did it compress why did it shrink up like this um, I'm not sure I suspect that since the window line spacing is close uh, you know the, the the two legs of the fan dipole are just really close together and perhaps there's you know some capacitance between the two and it's it's causing uh it's causing the tuning to shift it's uh, it's causing the individual bandwidth we're seeing on each legs to be narrower uh, i know that with fan dipoles you generally want the legs spaced farther apart but this was just an experiment i've never built one with window line let's see what happens you know now this this could potentially still be useful if you uh, cut the uh, legs, you know, if there were two areas of the band that you like to operate at, like let's say maybe you like to operate CW from 3.5 to 3.55 or so, uh, and then you liked to operate voice right around 3900, you could use this method to create an antenna that would have two low SWR points uh, in the areas you like to operate at, and then you could probably use an antenna tuner to tweak it, you know, in the other areas of the band where the SWR gets a little bit too high. So the idea still might be a sound idea from that perspective. Uh, but is it a... So it's not really a total failure. Uh, you know, it's not a total win either. I mean, we've learned something, haven't we? Um, using window line for a fan dipole is probably not a good idea. You might be tempted to make one where you cut one leg for 20 meters, another for 40 and that might work but what you might find is because the spacing is so close you might find that the each individual dipole in the pair is narrower than what you would expect it to be if it was a standard dipole we'd have to run that experiment to be sure that that's what's going to happen but uh, definitely did not see what i hoped to see in this case now i'm not completely shelving the idea in the future i might make another fan dipole, um, but this time using individual wires so I can separate them out quite a bit, you know, and uh, and see if that helps. Um, I still think it's a pretty good idea. I just think that the, using the window line is not the way to implement it. So uh, as, as others have said in the comments, and I've read before in the past, um, there's no such thing as a failed experiment. Uh, every experiment you learn something, and uh, this is what we've learned with this one, that it's not going to work as we expected, but there still might be some utility there. So I'm going to take it down and I'm going to uh, put it up on the shelf. And when I have a place where it's a little easier to take antennas up and down, because this was quite a task here in the RV park, uh, when I get some place where it's a little easier to do and I can work quicker at it, um, I will probably revisit this antenna. I might try to uh, shorten the entire thing and then shorten the shorter leg quite a bit further and see if I can make it work with a couple of sweet spots on the band and see if that individual bandwidth widens out as we get their, their, their resonant points a little farther from each other or if the uh, capacitance between the wires is just going to make them narrower. You know, we'll, we'll learn some more in the future. But as it stands, um, 
as I built it with the window line, it's not going to do what I hoped it would do. Uh, so there you go. Another experiment and uh, some more data gathered. So uh, that's a positive. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.